Serious, teachers, what is the worst thing you've seen a student do? You slash low underscore cartographer 2944 responded. A different type of bad than most of these. I was a teacher at a poor inner city school. I had a lot of wonderful students but some difficult ones. One was the worst, clearly bright but was always sleeping through class and acting up and never doing homework. I lived about 30 minutes away. One night, I stopped by the local Wawa after a night out with friends. Was at least 11.30pm and I was already dreading the early morning drive to school. And who should be checking me out but my own problem student. He was working late to make money for his family and then getting home at 1am or later before heading into school on 4-5 to five hours of sleep. He was a smart kid. Really smart. I hope things worked out for him but I can't help but wonder what would have happened if he'd been allowed to have a childhood and focus on his education. You slash Godzilla 1282 responded. I was talking to a kid about Pokemon one day during their lunch time. I'm the band director and a lot of band kids come to the band room for lunch. We were having a good time. He's a great tuba player and I tell him I can't wait to see him tomorrow. He took a rope and hung himself in the last period of the day by kicking a desk out from under him. Luckily the teacher he was with was able to somehow get to him, but I ran down in time hearing the screaming and was in time to see him hanging there as others tried to support him enough to keep him from dying. Kid was gotten down, but that was awful. It's so hard to tell sometimes even when you're right there with them right before they try it. You slash just underscore some underscore asshole responded. Early years educator specializing in children with SEN, special educational needs, eating feces, no competition. Seeing a child chewing their own shit is something that stays with you. Having to try and hook it all out of their mouth with your finger whilst they bite you is something you forcibly forget. Children with complex sensory issues, particularly those with hyposensitivity to smell and taste will often seek out particularly strong smells and tastes and things that we find disgusting are not to them and instead are stimulating. Combined with the delays to their development which means they are still likely to be at the stage of exploration where everything is tested in the mouth this can obviously lead to situations that are very unpleasant to us. Edited to add clarity and further explanation. You slash Merwian responded. In no particular order. Masturbating in class. Pushing a pregnant teacher in the stairs. Ignite a senior school administrator office by throwing a trash bin full of lighter fluid, while trying to block the door to prevent her escape. Fake gun and Rayal's knives, armed robbery, we had the police arrest them inside the school. After a fish dissection, hide a fish by taping it below a desk. It was just before a two weeks holidays. The cleaning staff threw up when opening the class. Throwing a big firework on a other student sitting in the toilet. Prostitution and drugs dealing in the school bathroom. Yup, glad that I took a break from education. Not sure about grammar sorry, French biology teacher, la securite de l'employ as they say here. Yeah tell me about it. You slash urban cowgirl 42 responded. I have a list. 1. The kid who would mutilate herself if you told her she couldn't leave the room. Now you had to let her get out for first aid. Kid had major issues and was in foster care. 2. The kids that would threaten to accuse a teacher of indecency to get rid of him. They were caught by being overheard in the locker room while they were planning. 3. The first grader so violent he left permanent scars on staff, and the sped department refused to change his educational setting. He punched me for tying his shoes wrong. 4. The POS that raped a blind girl while a substitute sat in an office not doing anything. 5. The freshman that put a senior through a glass window and broke his nose because the senior wouldn't stop bouncing a ball off of the back of the freshman's head. You slash musical nerd 24601 responded. My favorite teacher is high school was a very kind a lenient man. Do your work, be respectful, and follow the major school rules and you and him would be cool. The one thing that would seem minor, but that he was very strict about was taking any medication in any way shape or form in his classroom. One day, I needed to take some Advil for cramps and asked to take it. He said I needed to go to the nurse for permission. I ended up asking him why he's so strict on it. It turns out, he had a student pass out in class one day at his former school. He tried to wake her up and called the nurse, but she wouldn't wake up. They called 911 and by the time they got there, she had died of an ODD on narcotics she's took in the bathroom that she had hidden in a Tylenol bottle. I don't know how he went back to teaching after that. You slash single rider responded. Probably not the worst in this thread by a long shot, but one that made me despair for their intelligence. Was teaching at a college and at break, a lad, 18, so technically an adult, was regaling the other kids with the story of the girl at school, when they were. 14, who sucked off a dog. Of course none of them believed him, so he then proceeded to prove it by showing the video that had done the rounds at the time, which he still had on his phone. Seemingly that shit was legit. He then asked me if I wanted to see, I declined, and then asked him what he thought would happen if he, an adult, got caught with a video on his phone of an underage girl performing a sex act on a dog. He said oh, I never thought of it like that. I suggested that maybe he should and what did he think he should do about it. Fortunately he had enough intelligence to delete it, but it had never occurred to him. You slash Android 15 responded. Saw a very sweet 16-year-old girl I taught for 5 years being strangled by her boyfriend in the hallway at school. 
I was fuming and he got very aggressive with me yelling in my face that it was just a joke and I should chill. As a woman, I also felt really intimidated by this teenage boy. I passed it on to the safeguarding team and I'm not sure how they dealt with it, but I know the girl defended him. He got expelled for something else a few weeks later and she told me that they broke up when he was gone, but I still worry about what kinds of relationships she's going to have in the future if she thought his behavior was acceptable. She deserves so much better. You slash, deleted, responded. Rape. We had a transfer student in a behavior exchange. Got told he was just a bit rebellious with a mum who liked threatening to sue. Fine. Didn't get all his paperwork but we needed read of our own baddie so he was accepted against protests. We had him three months before girls began complaining he was groping and molesting them. He was 13. Finally got his paperwork and learned his real reasons for exclusion from his last school was SA. We worked really hard with him but his mother limited what we could do, we all knew we'd see him on the news one day. We did twice, once when the local footy team was about to win the league somewhat unexpectedly and he was interviewed in the street. And then again for his rape conviction. He was 21 by then. And stabbings. One kid got stabbed and was on life support but pulled through. That's not his fault, he wasn't the kid involved in that shit, he got stabbed protecting a girl whose big brother had caused some beef and she got attacked in a park. He was okay, physically, but I hope every day he stayed okay in the head. He was a good kid, really. You slash gay dragomeria responded. A couple. Worked in a church daycare, and we were open to after school kids. Starting with the more serious incidents, there was a boy in our school-age classroom that needed an IEP and a floater because he was prone to violent outbursts. But, the parents were refusing to accept that help, so all we could do was keep an eye on him. Usually that was impossible because our school-age teacher was by herself, unless our other classrooms were at ratio, and then I could help her. One of these times I was there, this boy grabbed a pencil and shoved it into another girl's eye. When asked why he did that, he replied that he just felt like it. Another incident with this boy which caused one of my co-workers to quit teaching was when he football tackled a preschooler, he was big and in fourth grade, and started to beat the shit out of him, causing the teacher to run and basically use physical restraint to keep him away from the kid until parents got there. He was expelled after this. Why he wasn't removed after the first? Well, LA guess money, because this daycare was on its last legs and was closing in four months time. On a lighter note, preschool during nap time got up and began sleepwalking. Freaked me out by myself in a dark quiet room until I figured out that's what he was doing. You slash Junjun underscore pon responded. Didn't see them do it, but it was such a catastrophe that I heard about it for weeks. The countryside Japanese junior high school I used to work at had one really rough year. When the third years were first and second, they were angels. As third years, they were absolute demons. Four male students in particular were stereotypical delinquents. They often just walked out of class and wandered the school, smoked out behind the building, and stole broke a lot of things. It was so bad they had to schedule staff who weren't in class to walk the halls to catch them before they did anything. Well, while the second years were out in the gymnasium for PE, one of the third year delinquents escaped and went up to their classroom which had all their uniforms and gear laid out on their desks. He pulled the pin on the room's fire extinguisher and sprayed the entire classroom down in pink foam. Everything was ruined. You slash blightcutter one responded. Worst. Almost bizarre. Worst was, during a high stakes exam I was proctoring at a charter school, in dead silence a student casually walked up to the desk, casually grabbed a pair of scissors and stabbed a girl sitting closer to the desk. Bizarre happened a few years back. Last block of the day and the kids are coming from gym class. A particular student looked sweaty like he just got done playing a seriously intense basketball game. Everyone sat down and I went over the daily norms and suddenly this kid rips his shirt off and starts dancing and kissing everyone in the class. Then he suddenly passed out and before security could aid me the paramedics were there. Turns out he was on PCP. You slash sinful sinless responded. One, had two girls fighting. It was a no holds back, they wanted each other dead fight. One girl got a box braid ripped out of her skin. Like a chunk of her skin was ripped the fuck out. And the braid scalp was on the ground. Both girls were picked up to be separated by deans, one girl started attacking the dean and ripped the dean's earring straight out. Blood fucking everywhere. Of course the student body surrounding the fight was laughing and filming like they weren't watching the most fucked up thing ever that was probably the most disturbing part. 2. I had a student go to the bathroom, he took a while, came back and another student went. The second student came back and complained there was blood everywhere. Odd, both were boys, not girls on their period or something. I mulled over it while class resumed. I start noticing the first student acting odd, his looking around, looking nervous. In one of his nervous fidgets he messes with the long sleeve of his sweatshirt and I see that wrap bandage around his wrists and soaked blood. I had to fake a tech problem so I could call down to the office and request immediate assistance. The nurse later said the kid was cutting himself really badly in the bathroom. You slash Melodinos responded. It's a three-way tie for me. Student 1, steal my class pet, a fish that I really loved. Claim to flush it down the toilet. Another student said they gave it away to a kid on the street in a water bottle. Student 2, 
raise their hand in a fist like they were going to hit me when I was visibly pregnant to see me flinch. They repeated this gesture three times. I wasn't their teacher. I just asked them to stop banging on random doors and go to class. Student 3, put his finger in his throat and forced himself to throw up on my floor. I asked him why he just did that. He said to go to the nurse. Why didn't he just ask though? Why start with forcing yourself to puke on my classroom carpet? I quit teaching, the kids and their parents and the admin are raising a generation that isn't going to understand consequences. We are creating sociopaths. I also grew tired of parents screaming at me for the dumbest reasons, I didn't allow phones out in my classes, another wanted me to pay for her internet at home. And finally, I was not paid enough yet I was expected to subsidize the education system. You slash miserable tell 890 responded. I had a darling little freshman girl in my class whose name was Brianiqua. She was really smart and liked to help other students who were having trouble with assignments. She even came into my room before school and at lunch just to talk sometimes. She was really sweet which is why I was so stunned when she behaved very differently in another teacher's class one afternoon. I was not present at the time of the incident, but according to others who were there, another girl in the class made a disparaging comment about Bria. Bria made a rude comment back. Then, the other girl made a profane, threat toward Bria. Bria stood up, walked across the class, grabbed the girl by the head, slammed her face into the desk and broke her nose. OMG. When some of my students came in and told me what had happened, I did not believe them, but she was immediately expelled. I never saw her again. Later, I asked the dean about it, and his story was the same. You slash deleted responded. The boys in this one class had an extremely strong hierarchy. One of the boys was the king of the hill and all the other boys would do anything he said or wanted them to do. These boys are 10 years old by the way. If you asked who was the strongest in the class, all of them would yell out his name, and if someone disagreed they would attack him and harass him until he agreed that the king of the hill was the strongest. Same goes for the smartest, coolest, best looking and everything else you can imagine. He could ask the other students to clean up his desk or bring him something and they would do it instantly. At recess he was always the team leader and if you asked which team won at the end they would simply say his name. I can name countless more times and moments of how strong his leadership was, however, let's get to the bad part. In the dressing room before PE. The leader decided that they should all play a game where they strangle each other. This game was that he strangled each and every one of them and if anyone wanted to they could strangle him as well, of course nobody dared to do that. So after strangling everyone a teacher found out about this and still the boys protected him saying it did not hurt and it was a fun game. Horrifying to think of what those children had to go through. You slash split 35 responded. As a preschool teacher LVE seen things, kids in early childhood are deeply affected by everything happening around them. They do some weird stuff, they get violent, it's wild. And yet, I still teach. The worst was during my first year of teaching. This was almost 18 years ago. We could never let this boy and girl in the classroom be around each other. We had a tunnel on the playground, and we caught them in there one day and they both had their pants down partway. Here's what happened after we interviewed each child separately. The girl told the boy to go in the tunnel with her, then told him to take off his clothes. The boy was scared of her too, and really wanted us to know what had happened. The girl's family was investigated. Nothing came of the investigation. On general, this girl was sneaky, and she'd target several kids in the class, like telling them to eat sand or jump off furniture. Looking back on it, as much as I know it's believed kids that age don't have malicious intent, I think she was trying to hurt those kids. I don't think children know what pain feels like for other people, but I don't think they never try to do something to someone else. You slash it's Gretchen responded. I had a third grader trip over a kid who was sitting on the floor. That kid's fight or fight reflex was triggered. He attacked the kid was choking him with one hand and trying to take out his eyeball with his thumb with the other hand. I wrapped my arms around the attacker's waist and pulled him away. He lost his grip, but then managed to grab the end of his shirt, so he hand over hand pulled him back to go for more. The other kid did get away. I'm standing in the middle of my music classroom with 48 third graders and my two first grade daughters, holding this kid who starts attacking me instead. Reaches around and claws up my face. Stomps my right foot until he breaks it. Everyone is just staring, shocked. I make eye contact with a student and directly order them to go get the coach. This breaks the freeze everyone is in and the kid attacking finally stops as she runs next door to get coach. This was the last day of school that year. I had that kid every day in my class for two more years. I had healed over the summer, so I don't think he ever had any idea how badly he had hurt me. The kid he attacked transferred schools and I've never seen him again. Always wondered if he was okay. I attended the attacker's graduation last year. He seems to be doing well. You slash deleted responded. We had a girl at camp one week who had some sort of mental emotional issue. I have no idea what it was, you're only typically told the specifics for kids in your cabin, which you are directly responsible for, but you could just tell she was off. Very sweet kid, maybe six to seven years old, but had a lot of trouble with impulse control. Well, one night, my campers and I were in our cabin. It's past lights out, so everyone's in their bunks, asleep. 
I'm just dozing off when I hear the door open, which I immediately register as odd, because I'm pretty sure I didn't hear anyone leave to go to the washroom, meaning all my kids should be accounted for. I roll over, look at the door, and discover this girl standing in the doorway without a stitch of clothing on her. Given that she's walking into a boy's cabin, this is obviously a very bad thing. I had to quickly leap out of bed, grab her, and get her outside, which led to me carrying her back to her cabin, because she didn't think to put on shoes and had cut up her feet walking to my cabin. It led to a whole to-do, because camp policy is to never have an adult alone with a child, and, for obvious reasons, that policy is doubly applicable when the child in question is naked, so I had to fill out a small novel's worth of paperwork in the aftermath to cover my our asses from a liability standpoint. We also had a counselor's meeting about that discussing strategies to keep her in her cabin at night and what to do if she went wandering again. You slash deleted responded. Taught a group with severe emotional and behavioral disorders for while. Had a particular kid with our positional defiance disorder, he'd later be diagnosed with conduct disorder, that lied to get his foster mom arrested. He was constantly lying, always had some kind of investigation going on me, fosters, counselors, other teachers. He stupidly recorded himself jumping off a second story ledge, somehow he broke his wrist not ankle. Well he came to school, it was quickly noticed because he was complaining obviously. He said his foster mom broke his wrist that morning because she's evil. Of course he goes to the nurse, front office deals with EMS, and start my call to CPS. I don't investigate I just report. Because EMS had to be called the foster mother was informed. Apparently she was going through his phone at the same moment, and was about to call the school, because she saw the video he took and was rightfully worried. She was pissed when CPS came to investigate, but it was closed quickly because she had proof the kid did it to himself. This kid tried to stab with me scissors, successfully stabbed my hand with a pencil, tried to choke a lost first grader in the bathroom, among so many other incidences. I remember foster mom sobbing telling me about how he tried to sabotage her medication, picked the lock on the kitchen knife box and repeatedly stabbed their locked bedroom door. You slash deleted responded. I watched a child bite a chunk out of another student's arm as we were trying desperately to separate them. He then went after the other children in the room because he didn't like that they were looking at him. We have a rule to never physically restrain a child but after watching this nightmare unfold, one of the assistant teachers held him back from the other kids by wrapping his arms around the kids' upper arms and sitting with him until support, the parents, or the police showed up. We evacuated the rest of the kids out of the room and into another classroom, trying to keep them calm and out of harm's way. They were obviously extremely scared. After not too long we heard the situation was being dealt with and to go back to our classroom. The kid had scratched up the tar's arms like a feral animal, literally clawing, kicking, and screaming while covered in another child's arm blood. Also managed to pluck out a good amount of the tar's arm hair. Apparently, according to the kid, all this occurred because another kid threw a gummy bear at him. He was suspended for two days. The kid who got bit was suspended for a day. Admin acted like it was the teacher's fault all this happened and the TA who restrained the child got fired for violating policy. I quit not too long after being screamed at by my boss because I didn't handle the situation and instead tried to protect the other kids by getting them out of there and into a separate classroom. Second graders by the way. You slash RWHA Thamburglu responded. I started work at a last chance school a few years back. The school itself is a very very old building, like has a historical designation and a plaque and all that. Needless to say, it's falling apart and the student body is reckless and violent, so there are probably more holes in the wall than necessary. It was maybe my second week here and I was getting used to everything that was asterisk not asterisk like my student teaching experience. We had a student who was in 7th grade, but he hadn't physically or mentally developed past the age of 7. Super adorable little kid, and then I heard his story and Christ, I don't know how any of these kids survive their homes, but this kid had it real bad. Anyway, the kid pulls down his pants, climbs the old electrical piping up the wall until his crotch is parallel to one of the holes, and just straight up puts his willy in there and starts humping. SRO arrived and took care of the situation and outside of needing bleach for my eyes and memory after seeing this, everything was fine. The other kids in the class were even grossed out by it, and they were used to this kid. When the student returned to class after suspension, I had a chance to ask him what he was thinking when he acted out like that, and his reply was that the hole reminded him of his grandmother, and that's what his grandmother makes him do to her. You slash purple ad 3830 responded. I've seen some things. I once turned around and saw two of my students were strangling each other, simultaneously. They literally both had each other at the throats and they were in a death grip. They were completely silent, why I didn't notice it at first. They were like 17 years old. I panicked as you can imagine. As a female I didn't feel I had the strength. So I ran out, saw a big strong man teacher and told him. He just said it's okay and went in to get them off each other. I never even went in to see the outcome. I just stayed outside until end of class. Another shocking thing that happened happened in another class. There was a new student. Just very sweet, studious and innocent. His mother told me he still slept with a stuffed toy even though he was like 14. Some boys convinced him to do something bad in a class. His mother, who was also a teacher at the school, wouldn't say what it was. But apparently it was something sexual he did in the class and he was told to leave the school. 
He ended up going to the school right next to that one, but it was so unfair that he got put out of the school while the boys who corrupted him just stayed on and got no punishment. His mother told me she had the washing on the line and he reached for his school shirt from that school. She told him you won't be needing that anymore my boy and he burst into tears. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, leave your own stories down below I would love to read them. If you would like to see more videos like this please like and subscribe it helps me out greatly.